Hey, welcome to Selling Out. I'm Jason Van Glass. I'm Ron Babcock. Wow, thanks for coming, uh, Rob. <laughs> Ron, uh, we're here on the show. We're gonna sell. Uh... You say Rob? I did. Yeah. That's the name I mean, of our producer. Because I was thinking of just letting it. No, go. it's live. Yeah, but then I was. I wanted but it's because it the but last name's Babcock. First name doesn't Ron. matter. The point is, you're watching Selling Out. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Point is, my friend George is gonna. <sighs> we're here to sell you things. Point is, we have like five, ten items on tonight's show. Uh, each one, let's say, better than the last. Oh, deals and steals. Steals yeah. and deals. You haven't seen most of them. You've seen this because it's been sitting here. I took a l little look over there. You've peeked. Peeked. I like what I'm seeing. First thing on the, not an auction block, sales block. Mm hmm This Bob Ross Chia Pet. Yeah. And if you're watching the show and you want this Bob Ross Chia Pet and you Venmo us $25 at Gangbusters or find some other way to be the first person to give us $25. Yeah, hold on. This has to retail for more than $25. I'll be honest with you, I have no idea what the retail price is. I feel like $25 is actually... Because I know how I got it. And how did you get it? I traded a pair of stilts for it in a white elephant Christmas gift exchange. Where do you keep a pair of stilts? Uh, you don't. You get rid of them at a white elephant gift exchange. Yeah, because you can't, in, in a closet, just getting them in and out sure. of Sure, I took them out of my parents' garage mm -hmm. and I gave them to my friends. 65 year old uncle. When you got the stills, were right. you still a virgin? No. No, Did I was, a, I was an answer. adult. I got the stilts at a garage sale. Uh huh. And then I traded them for this handmade Barbara Shiva. Now, how much were the stills? I can't say. But the retail price, hundreds. I don't think and so I don't know. It's just sticks of wood. I don't know where a Barbara Shia pet comes from. I don't know if this has retail price because I don't know if you can buy this in stores. Yeah, well, it's, you know, Bob Ross known as the joy of painting, but really, have you sure. ever thought about the joy of gardening? Sure. And it's a lot easy to garden when your garden is Bob Ross's head. Hair gardening, to be specific. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll just spin it around here. You can see it's a handmade planter. Uh, something I find interesting is maybe it's on this side. You know what's strange, though? I noticed that Bob Ross there growing his hair, but they didn't give you the option to actually grow out his goatee. It kind of feels like a little no. bit of a missed opportunity. And something they've done here, in addition to putting his goatee right on there, is they've put, they've put his hair onto the built right into the statue. So even if you don't plant the chia seeds, he already has a full ceramic head of hair. Mm-hmm. Which, to me, I would have thought bald. Kind of like overkill. Well, I personally find the Bob Ross, uh, I find him almost all chia pets to be personally offensive as a bald man. Oh, so yeah. I didn't realize this was a problematic item. Well, just kind of you look at it and you're like, wow, look, he can grow hair, but you can. I'm going to be so. honest with you, you're the first bald person we've had on the show. Thank you so much for um, so on behalf of giving my people a voice. Yeah. Let me apologize on behalf of people with weird hair uh, yeah. to the bald community. Well, I like it. You have like this weird choice to be bald on one side. Sure. It's not a good choice. No, I think it's I cool. Was, I was actually thinking about this you today. You definitely look like you hack computers from the 80s. My father... Do you remember Skate or Die? No. Okay, well, you would did, did skate or die. Basically. I'm a poser, so I don't know any like real <laughs> skateboarding punk stuff. As my, as I say, my father, you know, he doesn't have all of his hair. My mm -hmm. my grandfather's on both sides. I don't think had all, all of their hair. They're not, they're not bald per se, but they they lost some hair. And as a child, this is a huge influential pivot point I've realized on mm -hmm. my life. Uh, you know, I watched a lot of Comedy Central as a child. It was okay. a latchkey kid. I saw a comedian. I don't know who it was, but it was a it was a bald comedian. Mm -hmm. And his joke was that, you know, he's 25 or 30, he was young. And if he'd known he was going to go bald so young, he would have had more fun with his hair. He would have had the rainbow afro. He would have had the mohawk. This sounds and like a familiar And that went into my 10-year-old brain. And I've had a, I was like, I got to get weird hair. And I not have the hair forever. So you just live in life. Cut to 20 years later. I had terrible hair the whole time. Do you do that by yourself? I 100% cut it by myself, yes. Okay, yeah. It totally looks like a Thank DIY self-cut. Yeah, for 20 years now haven't spent money on a professional haircut. Oh, yeah, no, a bottle of shampoo, like, cost me, it, I sure. go through one bottle a year, I get it on Christmas. I mean, honestly, I save a lot of money by being bald. I, I cut this myself, too. I don't use shampoo, because I'm not a part of the shampoo conspiracy. The point is, this What's Bob Ross Chia Pet. clean hair? No, you don't need it. I've never used it. 20 years. Really? No. Do you mind? Please. Perfectly it's, clean. It's, I, you know, I, take a, I take a shower. Yeah. Huh. Well, you know who else doesn't use shampoo? Not Bob anymore. Ross Chia Pet. You Hasn't don't for shampoo. years. All you need is a little bit of water and uh, a whole lot of fun. So if you want this, you're watching this, you, the savvy internet user, 
We only have one of these. I don't have a warehouse of these. No, yeah, We've explained yeah. very clearly. This is like a collector's item. I only had one pair of stilts. I traded those for the Bob Ross Chia Pet. There's no way for me, to my knowledge, to get another one. I don't know if it was available in stores. I don't know if it was a promotional item. Do I don't know if they're still making them or if they'll ever make them again. Do you think the guy who got the stilts is like, oh man, good deal? I was worried I was gonna get banned from this family's Christmas gatherings because I, I'm there with my friend from high school. It's her extended family. Okay. So I'm tenuously there. Oh, okay, yeah, you're just like- You know what I mean? I'm like, I have like one connection. You're like, yeah. And I've get, been, yes, I've been to one or two previously and I'm gonna be honest with you, about 10 years ago, the salad shooter didn't go over well. I brought a vintage inbox salad shooter, supposed to be a gag gift exchange, mm -hmm. was not a popular item. No one tried to steal it. I showed up with the stilts wrapped, very, you know, generated a lot of buzz at what the is Christmas it, an party. Easel? Is it an what, easel? What is that? What is, what is that? And uh, I was concerned, I was, you know, I, this would be the deal breaker. Uncle loved it, walking around in, in the living room okay, on them. How, how, much, how much lift did the stilts give you? About a uh, foot, maybe. Oh, wait, no. But this was, a, this was an older no. man. Everyone at home and me were thinking like it was the giant they're, they're this tall. Like you see on, you know, from a circus entertainer, Uncle Sam, you know, with the giant eight foot stilts. Like a foot? Just wear heels. And I'm. Or to go walk on a step. I'm going to be honest with you, it was the most popular item at that gift exchange. Really? And so that's what I had to trade in order to receive this Bob Ross Chia Pet. And if you want the Bob Ross Chia Pet, $25, that's inclu that includes shipping. What I think I, I don't want to have to calculate extra shipping. I actually think it's amazing that you will actually send this to somebody. 100%. Because that's a lot of work to go down to the, no, off, because the packet, I, post office. I mail things all the time. Oh, well. So for me, it's it's second nature. You know, it's, I'm already making a trip. If we're bragging. You Venmo us at Gangbusters. You check out normalwebsite.com. Uh, either way, you give us $25, we'll put your address or the address of the loved one right on this. Safely pack it. How fun of a gift. It'll arrive at your door in three to six days. To, you know, you got a friend's birthday coming up. Uh huh. Don't know what to get him or her. Sure. How fun would it be to just send this to them? They won't see it coming. It has a great right. story. You could send this to anyone if you have their address. Yeah. And I think you'd be a hero. So if you like the Bob Ross Chia Pet, uh, Venmo is $25. Uh, check out normalwebsite.com uh, to see all of the, tonight's items. And just like a regular pet, it's also something that can die. Okay. So you need to take care of it. You need to water a somber, it. A somber Indian You know you have no. to water your pets, too, in the bowl so they can drink it. Uh, There's speaking, more? Of course. Speaking wow. of death, you brought it up. We all will die at some point. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not too soon. Yeah. Could die at any time, especially in America because of our freedom. Well, yeah. And that's, that's where these... These DVDs come in. Holy crap, what are um, these? You, you can look at them. Uh, it's handgun survival, of course. Oh, well, woman survival. Right, that's, so you have, okay. you have, you can use a handgun to survive. Oh my God, ground survival? You can, you can survive on the that's ground. This whole deal, you have. Um, you can use a woman to survive, woman I guess. Woman survival, and then Crucible High Risk right. Environment Training 2, Volume 1. Does that really that's make a sort sense? of that's sort of a yang to the yin because this is reality based. And this is a close hand. I can't emphasize that enough. This is reality based personal protection. Uh huh. Just in case you want to sort of like match that. Wow. This that's is... that's where the Crucible High Risk Entertainment Training Two Volume One and Close you, Hand Combatants you know, comes in. You're really bearing the lead because one of these has yet to be opened. Right. I mean, this is still shrink wrapped. And it has Women's Survival voice. is new. They're all in excellent condition. Mm -hmm. Online. The retail price and even used price of these, stunningly high. Like $25, $30 a piece, sometimes more. Really? These are both rare and expensive. Well, then are we going to charge $25 each for them here? We're going to charge $25 for all of them. I just want to... You got to get out. No, because... You got to get out. You can't be making deals like this. Well, I just want to help people because you could, you could be killed at any time in our mm -hmm. country. That's yeah. part of the cost of freedom. Yeah. You want to live in a sort of fascist dictatorship like Norway, there's mm -hmm. less chance you'll be killed randomly on the street. Here, that's not the case. You already own the handgun. Might as well learn how to use it. Or, uh, you know, you got a salad shooter, And that's apparently. where, well, not anymore. for defense. And that's where Jim Wagner's uh, and Black Belt Magazine come in. Uh, go ahead and read, uh, read us some oh, choice absolutely. quotes off there. Uh, Jim Wagner introduced the term reality based to the martial arts it's true. world made through that up. high risk, his column in Black Belt. You know what? I don't know what any of those things are. Well, Black Belt's a magazine. Okay. It's a karate magazine. I feel like you should put a Black Belt magazine on there. Now, this system is revolutionizing the martial arts and changing the way yeah. people train. Truly revolutionary. Wow. 
Few self-defense instructors in the world can come close to Wagner's background. Former I can't name soldier, one that does. Former soldier. That's true. Uh, jailer. Wow. Street cop. A lot of jobs I'm this guy had. Cop. I'm a street cop. This guy must get fired all the time. SWAT officer. That's like a fifth job. Diplomatic bodyguard. Wow. And counter-terrorist agent with the U.S. government. Yeah. Wow. This might have been the guy that killed Osama bin Laden. We can't say for sure. Yeah. Uh, but, Sounds like it. But yeah, we can't uh, say that's, for that's sure. That's why he's going to teach you ground survival, handgun survival, women's survival. And if you don't like the reality-based system or you want to kind of match it, you're going to get the crucible high risk. Do you, do you think it's funny that... Environment he, training, volume one. Sorry. Close hand combatives with Kelly McCann. Do, do you think it's funny that Jim Wagner is going to mansplain women's survival? Uh, maybe. I think she might be an expert too, or maybe you use her in some way. It seems like she knows Kung He's Fu. He's standing behind her holding a gun. Sure, but she's... She, she like You could Photoshop a loaf of bread into this and it would fit perfectly. You know? Like, it looks like she's just about to eat a sandwich. The point is, if you have uh, a woman... 44 minutes?! Sure. Seems like this a, one's on two discs, so it's actually like seems like an excessive amount. Of four training. hours of training, enough to be certified in close combat. One hundred and fifty minutes. There is so much quality sure. entertainment here, and you know you're gonna watch it as a gag, but you no. know you're actually gonna learn something here. If you follow the instructions on the DVDs, could, it'll change your life. I it promise could you that. Save your life. So uh, you know. So if you're living in terror, you want to feel confident. I'm constantly living in terror. Well, great. This is what you need, is these DVDs. Because okay. these will train you. You could you could take down, an assailant shows up, you take them down. Yeah. And I'm willing to let them go for $25. You could also just resell them. Yeah. I As mean, I said, it's like $100 worth of, of DVDs. You know, maybe we should sell an, uh, a new spinner, because this one seems to have well, I think a mind of the, its own. The spinner's good. I think we're just maybe not my, level. This one's my favorite, is, is ground survival. Because it, it's 56 minutes of sure. what you do on the ground. First of all, I didn't know you had that many options when you were on the ground. I'm going to be honest with you. The ground is the last place you want to be in a high-risk situation. Yeah. It's a place you got to survive. Now, this to me, this is like a, the makings of a really good Hollywood movie. Ground survival. And the whole movie just takes place with defending yourself. Just you on, on the, the ground, ground shooting yeah. a gun. Now, I assume you own a gun. We all own guns. I the am point a is, shooter. The point is you want to learn how to use it. You want to be able to defend yourself from the ground, from... Just like regular, let's call it what sea level. What's the room temperature of heights? Um, you got ground. You got ground. Oh, like what's? You the, got like jumping and shooting. What's like tepid? What's just like um, what the sea level? Uh, knee kneecap. The the room temperature. The the just like let's just call it normal standing height. That's on the first disc. Then you uh -huh. get the ground. And then there's one for women. There's one for women. If you know a woman, or you, got, you know, there's two different ways of defending yourself. You know, I'm gonna if you're be, a man. Or if you're a bull man. I'm gonna be honest, I think if you if there's a woman in your life, you surprise her with this DVD, she oh, will yeah. be surprised. Yeah, but then she then, will be but then you gotta stop. Then you gotta test her. You jump out, you're like, what have you learned? And then she like watch it together, very romantic date night. Uh, you'll have something to talk about. That's yeah, no, it is it will be will be a big thing so, to talk about. So uh, if you wanna uh, learn how to defend yourself or you just wanna make some money uh, reselling things on the internet. I really wanna watch these. I just you just want to watch them. You need I some entertainment. I want to watch the confidence of a man who has like a four mm -hmm. disc DVD series and watch the things that he has to say to the world. He's like, no, no, no. This is going to take four DVDs. Four DVDs that could be yours for a mere $25. I don't want to blow your mind. Now that's like a unit cost of $2 a DVD. It's technically five DVDs. There's two DVDs on this one. So it's five discs total. Four, four DVD sets, five discs. I don't discs. think I could handle these deals and steals any much longer. $25 delivered. Wow. Less than $5 per disc. Mm -hmm. Or let's say exactly. Uh, and if you buy anything on tonight's show, uh, there's a good chance that if it fits in the box, you will get some stickers. Uh, you might get my trading card. Do you have my trading card? Uh, I don't have your trading card. Okay, so we'll, we'll show it to the camera and then this will be... you got a trading card? That'll be yours to keep. So if you buy something, you'll probably get a trading card from me. You'll get one of... Uh, You'll get one of our producer, uh, Rob Schultz's zines, probably, if it fits in the box. And you know what? It could be honest, probably a good chance to get that. I'm feeling a little bit generous. You know what you're also going to get? Wow. Is you're going to get a small notebook from Bonds, a closed department store in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. Now, you might be seeing this and be like, oh, great, what's this? Just a bunch of uh, paper, you know, from an old department store? Not just a bunch of paper from an old department store. You also get a calendar to the year 1953. Now that's just gonna come in. That's handy. so useful. Yeah. Every seven or eight years, you can use that calendar. Absolutely, it, it, it repeats itself. So you just gotta keep track of it, but when you do, so, there you go. If you like something on Night Show, Venmo us the money, we will send it to you. We'll include stuff. This card's yours to keep, but you'll probably oh get gosh. a trading card. Yeah. I had 500 of them made. That's yours now. I could throw some fingernails too. Um, 
We're gonna move on to the, the next item. Um, look at this. Multi-hyphenate Jason Van Glass. Sure, I couldn't pick. His jokes go off the charts. <laughs> you clever. Don't give away all the jokes. Oh, now, oh, is this a... I don't know if you... Holy shit. I don't know what is kind this of light a... you live. Wait, no, this isn't a Thundercats. What, this it's is a... 100%. It's 100% a Thundercats. This is a, this is a Thundercats lamp. I was watching Thundercats on YouTube today. Well, then... Because someone wait, at work didn't know what it was. Do you own a lamp? Oh my god. Or do you live I in know, darkness? I just thought about this. I actually do own a lamp. Okay, great. So then this is perfect. I you, use it at night. You like Thundercats? Yeah. You don't live in darkness. I don't. I don't like to live in darkness. But you know what I also don't like? I don't like living in so much light. Oh my gosh, is there anything we can put over there? Scientists have invented something. It's this thunder cancel lampshade. Holy shit. Uh, this is a... Get a wash... Just blew my brains out all over the goddamn wall. Uh, now, this is made from an official 1985 Thundercats sheet, uh -huh. but I don't believe it's made by the Thund Thundercats Corporation. Oh, so you think this is a, a rogue Thundercats operation? This is sort of a, like an Etsy craft market situation. Oh my situation. gosh, this ain't your daddy's Thundercats. But it is very, it's very well made. Yeah, this is uh, a... It's a professionally made amateur lampshade, that's mm -hmm. for sure. This is definitely a professional amateur job. Uh, and w one way that it's a professional amateur job is that Lion O and Mumra's face are just cut in the middle for no reason. Mm hmm. But you do, you know oh, what I yeah. mean? You'll put right. that in the corner of your apartment, in my mind. Yeah. yeah. You know what nice is, is that when you're having a party, uh -huh. you could take this off, oh, you can put it on, and then that's how you know the party has actually gotten started. You'd be the life of the party yeah. in 1953. Have you ever seen anybody with a lampshade on their head? Only in New Yorker cartoons from 60 years ago. Yeah. But man. I think I'd be pretty impressed. What a world one. to live in, New York, 60 years ago. So Just if you lampshades on your head. If you like Thundercats, if you have exposed bulbs in your house, or you know someone that does, yeah. this is the item for you. Do you know how cool it would be to give this to someone in your life who likes Thundercats? It is truly a one-of-a-kind gift. You ain't getting this on Amazon. No. Unless you can. No, I don't think you can. Well, because as I can. said, it's it's made from an officially licensed vintage Thundercat sheet, mm -hmm. but it's not made by LJN or any other Thundercat this licensee. It is a it's something somebody, amateur. something that somebody. I think they make a lot of lampshades. If I yeah. had to guess from the from the quality of this lampshade, it's not their first. Yeah, lampshade, you look like they're probably turning and burning tons but they're of not, stuff. They're not. They're not officially light. They're not licensed to manufacture lampshades. So this yeah. is sort of a yeah. This is yeah. like a crafts. This is like an out, outsider. Do we have a snarf vibrator? I don't. Do you? No, I just was hoping. Okay, no. As far as I know, we don't have one of those. Okay, well, we could always hope and dream. Uh, what we do have is this... Or do we? Beautiful slash weird no, uh, lampshade. This uh, is very nice. I like this. You know, I, at first I thought this was just going to be a big goof. You know, one of those things like, oh, look at this piece of shit. And I have to say, everything you've brought out so far, I have enjoyed immensely. Well, then I think you'll be especially impressed by this. I say, uh, bring it on me. You a fan of The Office? I was watching The Office before we came. It okay. was the Office Olympics episode. So what we have here... Oh, that's interesting. This is a, this is a real, official, original script mm -hmm. from The Office. And it's signed, as you can see, by the creators of Selling Out, Jason McGlass, Rob Schultz, uh, Russell August Anderson, a couple of previous hosts, and uh, it's going to be signed by you two right now. Holy crap. Uh, so just put your big name on wow. there. Wow. You know, this... Um, this really means a lot to me because I, 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 you know, I, I'm from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, which is right I next to Scranton. I wow. went to I went to the University of Scranton. Is it as I went sad to as they make it out to be? Oh yeah, it's just famous for mining coal and depression. Is it worse than it appears in the show? You it, know, it's, it's they really, you know, they're ragging on it. They really nail Scranton. Wow, that's a beautiful like, signature. Uh, in, in all honesty, like they nailed the local references. Uh, behind Pam's shoulder at the secretary beautiful. desk is like a little logo for the University of Scranton. Uh, they have like 98.5 KRZ stickers. I mean, it is a, yeah, they totally nail it. Pam wow. is totally a Scranton, like 11. Wow. She's a Scranton. I didn't realize the show was so Now let's original. see what episode this let's, is. This is the episode, The Carpet. It's written by okay. Paul uh, Lieberstein, who has not signed this. It was directed by Victor uh, Neal Jr., who you know, has not signed this. Anybody could get an office script that's signed by people who are on the office. Sure. But can you get an office script signed by me? No. By Jason? No. By Rob? No. Because... Well, there's just one way you can get it. And we only want $10 for this. That includes just $10? Shipping. That's crazy. 10 bucks. And 
I don't know if you realize this. You can use this to recreate the office at home in your spare time. Okay. Like, we'll just open yeah. to a random page. We'll act out a scene. Yeah, that sounds um, great. I'll be Michael. You be Dwight. Okay. Sales rules. Yes, it does. Should we... Oh. Oh, sorry. Should we help them pick up everything? No. We don't help them. You're next, Pam. Watch out. I'll be Pam. Okay. You're going to throw my things on the floor? Maybe. That, that was a good fan. <laughs> Another Maybe. classic scene from The Office. Yeah, wow. everybody remembers that. It just really that. brings back that the just, memories. Yeah. Well, let's do one more. Okay. I just want to emphasize, enough, like, you could shoot your own copy. You could do, you could just be at parties. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'll be, I'll be Daryl. You be Michael. Okay. Uh, Daryl says, that was not dancing. Maybe he was having a fit. Okay, guys. Does it concern you official business? Paper business? Yes. Paper business. Are you done? Roy says, no. <laughs> wow, I mean, again, just another a classic. classic office scene that it takes you right back. Everybody Truly loves. hilarious, every yeah. word right off the page, and that—that's what you get. Now this is. Let's get the page count here. Okay, this is this is thirty-eight pages for it's ten dollars. That's like it's got industry accurate three cents a page. These are you yeah. work in the business. Oh, you know that I these, work in these in the and I could tell right here. That's that's, that's how you tell. That's an official. Are official. Yeah, when you know when you see one of say these. No, that's a script. Sham. This is a script. Uh, it's possible people that did work on The Office held this. Mm-hmm. But yeah. they didn't sign it. We signed it. Uh, and if you give us $10, we will mail it to you. And people are going to... And you know how fun, much fun you're going to have when they're going to come into your place and you're like, oh my God, do you have a signed autographed copy sure. of The Office? And you, you could have, just leave out say, the second part. Yes, I do. Now, if they say, are those autographed by members of the but office? But they won't ask that. They'll just, just it's implied. Ask, is that the autographed of the office? And you're like, oh, yeah, it's no big deal. They'll be like, wow, how did you? Oh, my God, that's so cool. You're so do, interesting. Do you know Steve Carell? And you'll be like, ah, ah not really. It's yeah, sort of a. It's gonna be, it's, you're probably going to have sex. Yeah. I couldn't have put it better myself. Yeah. So uh, if you Venmo us at Gangbusters $10. You know what? I like it that this script has been, it's been, it's not perfect. You know, it's weathered. No, you know, this I mean, is, it's this given, scenes, I would say, hours of this entertainment. This is scenes of stage time, this yeah. script. You could you stage know? this. Not legally, but you could stage it. Yeah. I this think is like an old car. Who do you have to pay to go to You can hear it working. You know what I mean? Huh? Oh, okay, great. Uh, you flip it to a page. We'll do a scene. Well, obviously, I want to flip to my favorite page. Okay. Uh, I'll do, uh, you do Oscar. Great. And, um, oh, okay, we'll, we'll try we'll start this. Here. Yeah, how about this? You do Oscar, and I'll do uh, Angela. It's, it's me. It's Oscar. I'm Oscar. I'm doing a talking head. What happened in Michael's office was wrong. I understand it makes a lot of sense, but it was definitely wrong. Obviously, Kevin did this. This is his sense of humor exactly. You do Kevin. I'll be, now it's Kevin talking head. There are so many people with motives, even me. Almost everyone is a suspect. Whoever did this is a genius. And then it cuts to Michael and Dwight high-fiving. I'm cracking up just thinking about uh, it. Yeah, it's just, again, the hour of entertainment uh -huh. that this script will give you. Hours. Because yeah. just like The Office, which you can rewatch over and over, you're watching earlier today. You can do the script over and over. You could, you could read the script hundreds of times. And this is the first revised blue shooting draft. Uh huh. The blue shooting draft, which I don't know what means, but it means something. I think it's close and to the production important. version. Yeah. Uh, so if you want this original uh, Office uh, script uh, signed by uh, me and uh, Ron and uh, some other people that work on the show or have appeared on the show previously, just ten bucks. And uh, we will mail that includes shipping, so it's it's you know it's like a good deal. This could cost three three bucks to mail that. That is a good deal. Who's doing your shipping? Three bucks, jeez, man. I mean, I'm just eating it because I want people to have. Oh, okay. I was gonna say good, it's good, happy things. In probably there. definitely like a buck twenty-five tops. You know, because you could do media mail. Media mail. You guys got to get on media mail. You ever need to ship DVDs, books? You media mail costs barely anything. Sure. It takes an extra day or two. Do we have something else? We do. We have a few oh more items. Oh my god. I don't know why you guys paid for a whole seat. You're only going to need the edge. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have a, a set producer? What's going on? Oh, uh, hey, Jason. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, this is me up in the lofted uh, booth here at Above Ground Studios. Just want to let you know uh, a lot of people in the chat loving the media mail. Big on media mail Great. in the chat. It's a good so value. You know. the... uh, I didn't know we had a bunch of media mail heads here tonight. I mean, I'm sort of one. I don't want to go off on yeah. like a postal regulations tangent, but media mail is. The best value, but you can only use it on things that are brown, printed matter, or CDs. Or DVDs. CD-ROMs. Yeah, books. Yeah. Books if they have no ads in them. Yeah. You know, I ask the postal clerk a lot of, uh, a lot of questions whenever I go. I'm that guy at the post office. Also, fun thing I like to do is ask post office clerks, uh, or uh, carriers, 
try this at home. Ask them what percentage of mail they deliver is junk mail. I guarantee, I guarantee every single time they will stop, pause and go, and then quote you a number between 50 to 80%. That's a lot. I've done it 20 times, every time. The breath, and then a number between 50 to 80%. Something and if up. that doesn't come true, I will come to your house personally wow. and apologize to you. Wow. And then wow. stay for dinner. Wow. And it better be something good. Well, something uh, a lot Otherwise, of Americans... Otherwise, you're going to apologize to me. ...don't realize about our postal service is that the uh, junk mail is actually subsidizing the rest of the mail. Yeah. So it's intentionally a lot of junk mail because that is what allows us to put 50 cents on a piece of paper and have it end up in Kentucky tomorrow. Junk mail. You know what else can end up in Kentucky tomorrow? If you live in Kentucky and send us $25. Yeah. Sure. Is this coconut bra? I was going to ask if you knew what this was. All you got to do is just put your tits in the middle and clap it around it. You could. Uh, it is uncomfortable. You could technically disassemble this and turn it into a bra. That's not what this is. No, I'm pretty sure it's a bra. I've seen boobs. No, it's a coconut for sure. Yeah, and bras. And, but it's a coconut bag. Bra. Coconut so you two things. Booby on the left and a booby on the right. Well, you say that, but this is a, this one's actually full of Vertigo brand trading cards. Holy shit! What a great set of tips. which are probably included. Um, are you familiar with the Vertigo line of? Never heard of it once in my life. Okay, well, Swamp Thing. You've heard of Swamp Thing? You've heard of John Constantine Hellblazer? No, nothing. Yeah. Sandman. Yeah. Jonah Hex. Uh, absolutely. You've These heard are... of checklists, right? It, what is this like? Bargain Basement Pokemon Go. It's a line of sophisticated comics for adults that DC slash Warner Brothers put out in the 90s uh, wow, for the kind of savvy have... consumer. It's mostly written by British authors. The, these cards you got Preacher is have... a Vertigo book. He's the, not in the set. The Preacher. You heard of Preacher? All the colors that you can possibly... Like sure, every they're beautiful. Inch of this is designed. Yeah, they're truly beautiful. Not really a this is a high end. style. This is for the high-end adult collector. Wow. So the, you're, we're, we're giving away not only a coconut bra, but we're also giving uh -huh. away cards in that coconut bra. Yeah, which fit... Well, it's a... I can't emphasize this enough. It's a. It's like a purse. Yeah, for or holding... Or it's like a carrying case. For holding boobs. A small phone will fit in there. Yeah, chest purse. Larger, newer phones may not fit. No mm -hmm. guarantee. Uh, I don't know the origin of this item. Who's I don't know this? if it's from... Who's this? Tahiti. Well, each card says who it is on the back. Oh. So this is... um. This is from uh, Mystery Play, and to Detective Frank Carpenter, everything that happens in the vicinity of a murder is significant. The flight of birds, the well, shape of, of clouds, course it's significant. the a position of happened. stars for Carpenter. Dude, this guy sounds like the worst person to talk to at a party. It Carpenter's just, looking for the truth. Oh, the position of a bird when there was a murder? And the murder of God that is guy, an unusual case. Oh, that guy would definitely says, yeah. just house the entire bowl of guacamole himself. God got murdered. Yeah. yeah. I haven't read the mystery uh -huh. play, but this is a card from mystery play where I guess God gets murdered and then a detective solves it. Dude, this just feels like something like a Jack Kerouac, if he was alive, creating You've cards. You've never read or heard of Vertigo comic books? I have not. I have not. Are you not a nerd? I am a nerd, but in things that aren't... You guys want to talk devil sticks? How about juggling? Danger Mouse, those are my nerd things. But there's sometimes there's so many nerd things that you kind of just have to choose your little camp and stay sure. in it. Uh, early '90s Nickelodeon shows, you know, Pete and Pete, Mystery yeah. Science Theater 3000, you know, that kind of basic. Well, if stuff. you like early '90s uh, adult uh, comic books, I did not say that. Some of those cards are included with this purchase. They're yeah. honestly probably included with almost anything you buy in the night show, I, due to the fact that we have an unusual number of Vertigo brand trading cards. Wow, we do have um, a lot of Vertigo trading cards. I mean, you'll probably get a pack with almost anything you've heard. Collect them show. all, I guess. There's 90 cards. There are no inserts in any of the packs. I just Has have anyone those. ever said to you, hey, do you want to trade Vertigo trading cards? I wish they would. I got so many. Yeah, it would solve a lot of my problems you're the if only I could one trade. That, you're the only one who has it. Because I have an unusual number of them. So if you buy something on tonight's show, there's a very good chance you'll get... I mean, if it fits in the box, you're going to get a pack of Vertigo brand Dude, trading every cards. Every one of these looks like a, a shitty punk band from Dayton, Ohio in the 90s. I mean, yeah, because that. they're from the 90s and they're very cool. That is CD art. But the cool thing about it is you can keep them in this purse, which you could also sure. keep your boobs in. I mean, we got books of magic. You won't appreciate this, but this, this is what J.K. Rowling ripped off to make Harry Potter. Um... I mean, you got Sandman. You've never heard of Sandman? I heard of Sandman. No, Swamp, this, Swamp this Thing? Is, this is just cool. It is very cool. Someone should buy it. Yeah. I can't emphasize that enough. Everything on the night show is really for sale. If you Venmo us... Uh, Look, you got a lot of... It, this it, is well made, wouldn't you say? Oh, you could murder someone like, like this. The 
child or possibly adult that makes these makes yeah. them full time. Because there's a beautiful clamp on it. It's yeah. hand stitched, but it's very look like at, I I could not make this. Look at the detail of the belt right here. That doesn't just happen. Someone had to make a decision and then follow through on it. So my guess is that somebody bought this in Tahiti or or similarly yeah. French Polynesia. They they brought this back. Mm -hmm. A beautiful item. A beautiful color. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we're capturing that at all. It's home. like red got in a fight with. It's a really beautiful like mauve, magenta, yeah. red yeah. leather color. It looks uh, like the it looks like the color uh, a woman in her forties would wear when she's trying to get her group back. This is your eat, pray, sure. love moment, and it holds truly anything that fits inside of a coconut. Yeah, eat a large coconut, an yeah. oblong coconut. Uh, so if if uh, that's your style, or it's the style of someone you know, or maybe you're just looking for a new style. Yeah. Ooh, what if you want a statement piece? What if you want a peacock? Turn heads. You could get this, and you could get a bunch of Vertigo trading cards, which sure. apparently are important for some reason. Well, they're just fun, and I, we have an unusual number of them here at the show, so if you buy something at the show, you, you'll get Vertigo, Vertigo cards. Like, if, cards? It, if it makes yeah. sense to fit giving cards, you probably get Vertigo trading cards. Cool. You can just do what, maybe you love them. Yeah. Or you could just give them to someone that I feel like does. you're just mailing future garbage when you include the Vertigo trading cards. No, they're very cool. Yeah, no, you kind of, okay. I have a set. These are extra. Yeah. You, you, your opinion doesn't count because you are you don't know Swamp Thing. I mean, I, I know Swamp Thing. I've heard of you Swamp Thing. It's you a, haven't read Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. It's you a, haven't read Neil Gaiman's. It's Gaiman. a thing in a swamp. Well, is it? Spoiler alert. It is. Because later they find you, you probably you're what, probably maybe ignorant. You needed just to take a shower. Is that what happened? Is you're there probably a real man underneath that. Swamp you're probably thing? going through life thinking that it is a man under that that swamp. That that's well, a man. It? That it's a scientist that was was set on fire by rogues who ran into a swamp who became a swamp thing. And I'll have you know that in the Alan Moore so run of swamp thing. So he just stayed in the swamp. He never got out of the swamp. Swamp thing finds the body of that man. Swamp thing's pure nature. He's not a man at all. Okay. You would know that if you'd read Alan Moore's well, run on swamp thing. You really care about swamp thing? Maybe you should give him like a name, like Kevin. Or Greg. But he's not like, a man. But that oh, man so he can't have a name? The memories of that man are inside of a pure swamp creature. And he teams up with Superman sometimes? It's pretty okay, fun. Okay, see, I'm out. I'm so out. It's, it's fun. Uh, oh, if only I had swamp thing here to help. <sighs> Do we have more? Yeah. We Whoa. got a couple more things. Wow. I don't know. Um, it's probably too small for you. No, this may not look like much. The to biggest the untrained regret eye. in my life is that this is too small for me because this is just gorgeous. Beautiful shirt. Yeah, it can be a beautiful shirt. It could be a statement piece. Do you ever just want to be the life of the party? Well, get ready for this. Are you familiar yeah. with the concept of provenance, no. like in a, a painting? No, I'm not actually. Okay, so uh, for a painting to be authenticated, you have to you have to demonstrate provenance. It has a history that this is the artist sold it to this person who sold it to this person, okay. and you got it from them. Otherwise, you could just make your own Jackson Pollock at home. And they call that word provenance? Right. What a wonderful word. And that's how you prove that you didn't just make a Jackson Pollock yourself. I have provenance. I can prove. This shirt has provenance. <gasps> this shirt is a Jackson Pollock? Once belonged to the Weird Al Yankovic. Shut the fuck up. This is 100% Weird Al's old Hawaiian shirt. Wow. That's pretty Previously cool. both owned and worn by the one, the only Weird Al Yankovic, Hand to God. Now, what is your provenance for that statement? His wife uh, donated a bunch of clothes to uh, Goodwill in Culver City, California, where my friend was uh, working community service. Uh -huh. uh, you're not allowed to buy stuff if you're uh, working there. And so he texted me. I came over immediately. I, I got about eight of these shirts. I also got a couple of uh, jackets, like crew jackets that you get when you're on like a, let's, for example, a, a Nick at Night uh, video show that existed in 1989. We got the jacket for that. Cool. Gave that to my friend for his fig, uh, okay. his cut. It smells good. Right? It smells like Weird Al. Now I've not washed this. Uh, it smells like a thrift store. Really right. Does. I didn't want to wash it because it has Weird Al's essence in it. And I I need more money for this than I need for some of the other stuff because I, I don't know how to price so I'm asking $200. Listen, I'm a big Weird Al fan. That Great. is not a ridiculous amount to ask for a Weird Al fan. The cool thing mm -hmm. is you get this shirt, and you can use this shirt as a conversation starter on Twitter. Sure. You could tweet at Weird Al and be like, I got this shirt from this right. weird show, and it, it was could. donated to a thrift store in, in Culver City about right. what year? About five years ago. About five years ago. And you can ask him, is this your shirt? You could show up outside of Weird Al's house. But don't do that. Place of work. You, you could, could interrupt him 
and his family at, at dinner. You could, but don't. You could wait outside after the concert wearing the shirt. That would be cool. I think that one's okay. And be friends with Weird Al. Yeah, and he's going to see that. He's going to be like, hey, I used to have a shirt like that. And then he would be like, I'm wearing you. I'm wearing your skin. Well, not yet, but you can with the shirt. I mean, that's just fun. And I think I think Weird Al would enjoy seeing his shirt on one of his fans. $200, sure. I'm in. And it's a perfectly nice shirt on top of that. Uh, I believe the sizing... Uh, now, the best part about it is, is that Jason, now, he's going to say he's not going to do it, but he is. He will hand deliver this shirt to wherever you live. Using the U.S. Postal Service. Absolutely. Uh, I'm approximately 5'10", maybe 5'9 and a half. I'm about 135 pounds. This shirt looks wonderful on me. I'm mic'd up. I'm not going to put it on. But if you're about 5'9", about 135 pounds or smaller, this is the perfect shirt. What if you're 5'10 and about 175 pounds? This might be too small. Okay. Because this is like a this is like an '80s medium, mm. but like a modern small. But you're gonna feel like a large. Uh, and so if you if you like, love Weird Al, maybe. if you want Weird Al's essence to be inside of you, or you just know you have a Weird Al fan in your life, you want to impress them with a truly incredible yeah. birthday gift. Even if somebody doesn't buy this, you cannot argue with the fact that every single item has been extremely interesting, except They're, for the office script, 100% true. Uh, let's, let's play a record. Well, we would need a record player. So if you, if you'll gently lift that record player up here. Oh my here. gosh, you're not going to believe this, but there is a record player right here. We have a, we have a pretty interesting oh, record oh, sorry. on this week's show. Let me just carry my briefcase onto this. Not a briefcase. It's a record player. It is a, uh, portable record player. I mean, isn't everything portable if you have large enough hands? Uh, I'm going to put this record on here. This record is uh, called Now You, underlined. Can interview Tom Jones. Holy shit, that's possible? So, uh, why don't you just hold this up while we while we drop the record on there. Now, there's a script in there it's a with spe- questions in it. Okay. Much like the office script. You ask the questions, Tom Jones gives the answer. This is so you, the radio DJ of 1971, or the current podcast maker, Uh you could have Tom Jones on your show. Wow. Because you ask him, you'd be like, Tom, what's going on? Seriously, wow. What happened next, Tom? Into the toilet. Into the toilet? Six? I was actually in the toilet. And you were. You were. The way you say the word toilet. <laughs> That's unbelievable. What uh, happened next? Oh, they were just sleeping. Oh! What? They asked me where was my manners. Oh! <laughs> the girls that followed him to the toilet. And I killed them off and they said you wouldn't buy my records anymore. What? That's the way you're going to be here, you know? Wow. That's it. Well, luckily you have other fans, Tom. You don't need those six harlots to buy your records. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. Are you drunk, Tom? Oh, no. You just got to do it and hope that everything comes up around on TV. Wow. Tom, what's, what's next for you? No. The only, the only thing uh, uh, I have to worry about the money uh, is that uh, I don't have to worry about my old age. You know, apart from that, uh, I just enjoy what I do. And uh, the are, only thing that I are you still alive? I said, are, are, are you still... Champagne. Tom, are you dead? What's it like on the other side? I haven't followed your career that closely. I'm not sure if you're still alive. Tom, Tom are you alive? Are you dead? Tom, can you hear yeah, us? I wanted to stop my father from working. He worked in the coal mine all his life since he was 14. And, uh, Seems like a weird answer. answer. Yeah. Uh, which Tom, you're kind of dodging the question. Uh, so you can do what we're doing and just. I mean, that's yeah, just improvise. But yeah. let's say, let's say you want to be professional. Uh huh. Look at that. There's another script. There's a there's a script with your questions, his answers, color coded, and you know what? This script has not been used that much. This is still no. almost hot off the presses, to be honest. Uh. And oh gosh, look Tom, at this! Can you, can you shut up for a second, Tom? Yeah, Tom. Tom, we're on the radio. Tom is Tom. Tom time. Okay, Tom. Tom, Tom, you're being a little. This bit comes of a with a right comes now. with a promotional 
list of Tom's 1970 itinerary, all the towns he's going to be in. Okay, okay, Tom, we really need you to tone it down. Tom? He's going to be at the Merriweather Pavilion. Tom, tell us about the Met Sports Center. Thank you very much. I think uh, huh. they've got plenty of you know, fellas. We call them bouncers. We call them bouncers here. Now, I don't have yeah, a he's podcast. Sounds, Do you have a podcast? I don't have a podcast. Well, so, I, I'm a, I co-host on it. Tom? Yeah, okay, Tom, buddy? Tom? It's, gonna, it's, a, it's funny. Tom, thanks. I co-host on a podcast called The Best Debate in the Universe with Maddox, but we've never had Tom Jones on. Oh, you've never had guests. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you have a podcast, as I assume you do, because you're watching this on the internet. Most people have podcasts. We, this is a vodcast. A vodcast? Oh, that's a word That's now. what we're doing now, I think. Is that a word? It used to be. And was it? If you have a, yeah, like 2004 to 2006. Mm, good word. If you have a podcast, this is a chance to have Tom Jones on your podcast. Listen, even if, if you don't have a podcast, guess what you do now, okay? This is a great podcast sure, start called one. Every I week. Interview Tom Jones. Every week. And, you, and the great thing about it is you know what the interview is going to be, so you can tailor the questions so that the answers sound absolutely I mean, perfect. It says it right here on the back. You ask the questions in the order prepared in the two scripts enclosed. No. Let me ask you a Fun. question. I don't know how much you're going to charge for this, but I'm assuming a million dollars? Less. It's just 25 bucks. Really? And wow, that seems like way too cheap. That's a good deal. That's what it goes for on Discogs uh, mm -hmm. or, or less. Now, it's a, it's a pretty valuable and rare record. They didn't make a lot of these. Now, what about the record player? No, we need that in order to sell the record every week. I got it. So this week's record is the Tom Jones uh, interview disc. This is a promotional item that was only sent to radio stations. Uh, it's in adequate condition. Let you me, could hear it. It's fine. Can I? Can we do a thing where I pretend I'm the record producer and you're Tom Jones, and I'm going to pitch you the idea for Great. this record? Okay. Tom, how was lunch? <laughs> it was pretty good. I ate a ham. You know what? Wouldn't it be cool if we could have conversations like that with people at home? Oh, I don't worry about money too much. Here's the idea, Tom. We record a record where you just talk. You mind if I start singing? <laughs> Absolutely not. And then we just put that on as a record. It's not unusual to have fun with anyone. Will it go platinum? No. It's not but it'll unusual be a thing. to have fun with well, anyone. That's one of his, right? To, to Mandy, right? He wrote the song. That, about I think Mandy, that's one of his. The dog. I only know about Tom Jones. It's a song about a dog. The, the, yeah, the, it, I know about that because of the show. Because uh, the movie can't hardly wait. I guess I know about him because of the time that the six girls followed him into the toilet. He was on the toilet. Uh, and the girls, I guess, tried to have sex with him. He used some foul language. Maybe they told him to, you know, F off. But who has and they were like, hey, Tom, inappropriate. We will no longer purchase your records. Who hasn't had that? That's what I think of when I think of Tom Jones. I have done so many stand-up shows across the country where I have almost had sex with women in a toilet. We're going to flip this over. Uh, we have time for like two more items on night. So if you want this, $25. I can't emphasize this enough. We just have the one. Wow. You Venmo a sack gangbusters, $25. I'll put this in a specially designed box for records. This I is have a those. conversation starter. I own those because of and the, Ender. the records that I own and occasionally sell. You can actually have the conversation with Tom Jones. You don't need anybody else. <laughs> Let's get some words of wisdom from Tom. And it sort of rubs off on you. I'm getting my family cheap up that now. Let's <laughs> see what the, you know, wow. back in the... <laughs> Wow. Wow. Are, are Did the 23 and me thing. Is that right, Tom? Well, in addition, in, in addition to uh, the latest album, I've got a new single album. Oh, what is it's it? It's called Dog of Dogs. Oh, I haven't heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last week. Was it one of your hits? It was a cool writer on the Sound Usual. And quite a few other things. And Delilah, I know Delilah as well. Uh, Alright, Tom, we got we to. Gotta, yeah, Tom, we got to wrap this we gotta, up. We got to. Oh! Oh! Jump right into the song. Mm. Well, the point is, uh, if you want to talk to Tom at home or on your own podcast, you can just do it. You don't need to air it. You can just You can just hang out home alone with the open-ended uh, radio interview disc. You know, I like that the Slide word... Slide that back in there for me. The word vodcast never really caught on for a reason, because just listen to it. Vodcast. We're going to slip this away back into oh, its oh. protective sleeve. Uh... I'll take this. You gently uh, move the record player out of the way. We're, we're going to do two more items on tonight's show. Uh, record player or my briefcase. <laughs> this is crazy. Now, we had the we had the shirt that was owned by Weird Al. Uh-huh. $200. You Venmo us $200. You'll have that shirt. This shirt was, I guess, technically owned. It wasn't worn, but it was technically owned by director, screenwriter, actor, Kevin Smith. Wow. 
Uh, and this is the shirt he had. Uh, hold, hold that up for me. Absolutely. I'll, I'll point to it. Um, you're an industry savvy guy. You know that when you work on a on a big movie, usually you get a crew jacket, like you a Letterman get, jacket. Get some swag. You know. Yeah. Like, you thank get, you for working on it. Maybe in the '80s you got a Letterman jacket. These days you get like a hoodie sometimes. Or if you work on a Kevin Smith movie, you get a hockey jersey. 100. Uh, percent If you worked on the movie Clerks, you got this hockey jersey. This one's unused. Well, yeah, you know Kevin Smith um, didn't wear it because there are no food stains. No, and I have, I came in a little baggie, and I have that baggie. It's completely unused. Um, I bought eight of these at the flea market in Oakland in 2002. You're just bragging at this point. Uh, and this, I didn't realize I sold them all on eBay for like $75. Really? In 2002. Oh, yeah. And then I was back at my parents' house. I found one more. I didn't realize I'd kept one or accidentally misplaced one. I, mean, I still have it. I love it. Um, let me ask my producers the price on this. Forty dollars, half of what I was selling on eBay back in the day. You got to be kidding. And that's yeah, delivered. Yeah. It doesn't even include the shipping. Forty dollars shipping this shirt. Now that is cheaper than you would probably pay at like a vintage store. Well, you wouldn't be able to find something like this because you. Yeah, this is one of a kind. You had to work at the movie Clerks or know someone that did. It's one of a kind, except for the other seven. No, there's there's probably like a hundred of them. Okay, so it's one of a hundred. Everyone that worked in the movie Clerks got one. Uh huh. But how and many then, of them have survived? And then some were left over. And this, again, this does not have a size in it, but I'm yeah. gonna call it, um, for a hockey jersey, it's a small. I'm gonna call it Kevin Smith size. It's a small hockey jersey, but it's an extremely he, large shirt. A lot of people don't know this, and it's probably because it's not true, but he didn't want any shirt that he couldn't fit in on the set. That's why they're all really wow. big. Yeah, and that's definitely not true. Um, so if you like the movie Clerks, if you like Kevin Smith, if you maybe just play hockey or want to impress people by pretending you worked on the movie Or Clerks. if you like the movie Clerks. Sure. Perfect for you. 40 bucks. That's delivered. That's uh, probably the deal of the night. This is my last one of these. I sold the rest 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I mean, if I so I don't, the, I don't have any more of these. If you want this, you got to be the first person to bend on. I feel like something like this would happen in a record store, and if this was on the wall, you went, "How much was that?" And this was, and someone said, 40 hundred and fifty bucks." Yeah, easily. Forty bucks is actually, including shipping, yeah. is a shockingly and it's, fair price. It's honestly like a pretty jersey. It is the nice. color palette's I mean, nice. It's got that old vintage look without being yeah, old and 90s, vintage. Yeah, nineties, sharks. Know? It's San like Jose sharks it's look. Nineties white. Oh, nineties white. It's the best kind of white. It's a little off white. But still white. So if you if you like hockey, if you like Kevin Smith, uh, if you just want to create a lie about yourself and tell people you worked on the movie Clerks, oh my God! There's one way to do it. It's to spend most forty dollars and get this jersey. That you're Kevin Smith. Sure. Honestly, gonna, that's going to be harder to get away with who's that lie. Fact check it. I think people know what he looks like. Probably. But Other you, directors, just, you would get away you with know, it. Are you just afraid of being afraid to live life? Like go out. If you there, told people you Smith. you were Richard Linklater. I think you'd get away with it, even in L.A. sometimes. If I can get away with anything... I don't think anyone in the country is getting away with pretending to be Kevin Smith unless they do sort of look I'm like I'm only going to get away with being two people. Uh, Matt Hasselback, who Never was heard of a him. quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. But you could tell me you're any quarterback, and uh, I would be like, oh, cool. Yeah, I, but Matt Hasselback after he hasn't been working out, or H. John Benjamin. Sure. Which I actually do kind of look like. Point is, you can tell people you were the gaffer or whatever. Yeah. But it, it's going to cost $40. You need to Venmo us $40. That's the best uh, 40 bucks you ever spent. We have one item left on time. Unless it was $40 spent on this final item. Now, I don't think there could be anything better than what we just saw. Well, this so is, I'm like, my expectations are pretty low right now. This is a little different than everything on tonight's show. Mm -hmm. It's for sale. You give us the address you want it sent to. It's your address. It's your friend's address. We will mail it to them. Okay. This item's a little different. All right. These are for Mike Menendez. Do you know Mike Menendez? He's a stand-up comedian. Um, okay, first of all, these are gorgeous. So Mike Menendez... I found him next to a dumpster. ...is going to be a lucky SOB. Now, who is Mike Menendez? He's a stand-up comedian. Okay. Uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, he was on a stand-up show that my producer and I were hosting. And everyone on that show, they received like a gag gift. Uh -huh. And he received a, a painting. And he responded so negatively to it, to it that we've made it our mission in life to give him as many paintings as possible. Hold on, are you telling me that he responded negatively to these two paintings? No, 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 it was a different painting. It was like a painting of a dog. Okay, now what, was that a good painting? We found it on the street. Was it a good painting? No, no, it was a, it was a dumpster okay. painting. So did it, what, were his feelings valid? Yes, and because of his valid feelings of not wanting to receive amateur trash paintings. We want to give him professional trash paintings. I've successfully made him take six paintings now. He has six Holy paintings. Shit. So this he still been, has them all. So you're telling me that this actually has been successful? 
They're piled up in his bathroom. Okay, so if you guys want to hop on the success train, what, what do we have to do? Venmo us $25. We will give these to Mike Menendez against his will. Now, hold on. You're not giving just one painting. No, tonight we're giving these two, two matching paintings. Pa and are these, the, are these the same exact paintings? Well, they're slightly different because they're hand-painted by an amateur artist who then threw them away. A professional amateur artist who was like, this isn't good enough. Sure, well... But you know what? This is gorgeous. I'll be, I'll be very honest with you. They'll become a professional artist if these paintings sell tonight. Much like Van Gogh after oh he died. God. So we are making dreams happen. Van Gogh never sold a painting in his lifetime, but after he died, he became a professional artist. But he was dead. And we don't know who painted these, and they'll never realize they become a professional artist. Unless they're watching. But if you Venmo us $25, what we'll do, my, my, my goal, is to find out where Mike Menendez lives, mm -hmm. show up at his house, and make him take these paintings while we film it, Publishers Clearinghouse style. It got a little bit creepy there at the end, the way you described that. I think of it more as like a friendly bullying situation. And I'm bullying Mike Menendez. But can you, when you present it to Mike Menendez, if somebody says it's $25, oh, he's gonna hate it. can you just be like, Mike, we got you a painting. We actually got you two paintings. And you could be like, do you like this painting? And he's going to be like, no. Be like, okay. But here's the thing. Do you like this painting? Yeah. And that's just going to feel good. Because we know it's the same thing. Even though he doesn't want them and will hate them, he will accept them and he will add them to the growing pile of art that remains in his house. He told me that they're in his bathroom now. They're just, he hasn't hung them up. I keep telling him he's got to hang them up because I think if a, a woman came over to Mike's apartment and he saw like a wall of Can you hold paintings. this for a second? Yeah. You know, can you hold this one for a second? Yeah. You know, when you first brought these out, I actually honestly legitimately thought they were actually pretty good paintings. Sure. And now that I'm getting to stand no. back a few feet and look at them, I can hundred percent agree. yeah, this is a real garbage fire right now. They, they, they're impressive at first, yeah. but imagine the burden of having to look at them every day. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it you looks... You start to dissect, you see the flaws. This is like a... It the looks brush, like the tree just lit on fire. The sort of, the sort of slapdash, like, what is what is this? There's, you know um, what I mean? That's not good. There, I don't know, is that is that a part of a, a, a cactus that died? The uh, point is, we won't have to think about this. Mike Menendez will. Because if you give us $25, we will make sure Mike receives these and keeps these paintings. It's a very Thundercats kind of palette. And he'll have to just sort of consider why or what he's done wrong. So if you believe in spite, if you believe in bullying an adult man. And if you like the work of Basquiat and Van Gogh. Maybe you know Mike Menendez. More importantly, maybe you don't. You just appreciate punishing someone. Yeah, for doing nothing wrong. This will be the seventh and eighth painting he's received. We do ask, it's sort of like an adoption fee at like a, a pet shelter. We do ask for a $25 Venmo fee. Now, how are we going to, so somebody gives $25. Right. We give Mike the paintings. How are they going to know, like, you know, are we going to, are we going to post a photo of it? You're going to do the video thing? Well, I mean, I'm going to try and film it, publish okay. your style. Now, I don't know where Mike lives, but I'm willing to find out if you Venmo us $25. Yeah, all right. I'm, we're definitely, I'm definitely complicit in some sort of crime. Right now. I think it's fun and lighthearted, but that's because I'm the one punishing yeah, Mike Menendez. Yeah, it is Menendez. until you do something weird. So, if you want to help us punish Mike Menendez, you want to help us yeah. stalk him, hey, find out where he lives. Say, fuck you, Mike Menendez, with us. You want to make him take a seventh and eighth painting into his small apartment. Yeah, it's really taking up a lot of space at this point. I think $25 is a good price for that. Yeah, and remember, you can also get an old notebook from Bonds, worn by more men and women than any other clothes in America. Bonds, now clothes in Wilkes-Barre. So if you want the Tom Jones interview disc, if you want the Weird Al shirt, you want the Clerks hockey jersey, you want a Thundercats uh, lampshade, you want learn self-defense. Uh, learn self-defense from the ground! Uh, Venmo us, check out normalwebsite.com. All the items on tonight's show, if they're still available, uh, first come, first serve. But uh, we will mail these to you if you uh, if you buy it now. No, the weird thing is, is that you're never gonna do this again because there's no way you have more things that you could, you know, show next week. Wait. No, no, no. The what? show the show's on next week. What? The show's on almost every Friday. Oh my gosh! So you have more things around the midnight, show next week? eleven forty-five. Now, are they all the high caliber bullshit that you've been slinging us uh, this week? Well, you have to tune in to find out. I mean, all right, I'm, I'm on there. Um, so if you see something on tonight's show, you like it. Uh, Venmo us at Gangbusters. Uh, check out twitch.tv uh, slash Green Glass Store. That's where these are on Twitch. They're mm -hmm. on some other services too. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's where you'll find us next week. It's probably the in, easiest way. I was in some commercials for Twitch, and at the time, I oh, had yeah? no idea what it was. I was in a commercial for CISO, and they uh, they never paid me the $50 they promised me. Motherfuckers. Now they're gone. And just like Mike Menendez, he's going to be... I got, I got... 
Coward. Why I think about CISO, how they still owe me $50. Point is, for a second I thought we were actually committing a crime. CISO owes me $50, and so I do need money. So it's important that you buy something on tonight's show. Uh, Ron, thanks so much for joining us. I honestly tried my damnedest to sell these items. Well, and you know what? It wasn't a hard job because the items sell themselves. Right, and they'll be available for sale 30 minutes. If you're watching this on replay an hour from now or a day from now, so you can check normal website. You can see that it's still available. If it's still available, Venmo us the money or PayPal us, uh, and it's yours. Yeah, it is uh, some truly some fun stuff. Thank you for having me. I, I want to thank. I had a wonderful time. I put on a button-up shirt for this. I don't know why. Sure. I was like, well, it's on television. I'm gonna get a little dressed up. Can I tell you something? Be weird. Not it's to. a new shirt, and I didn't have time to wash it. Sure. So there's some creases in it, and I realized like, oh, they'll be they'll be gone. Mine, mine no, does whatever. this. And you know what? Yeah, look. The creases are still there. This is fresh out of the package, fresh for you. Thread and sort of like bursting from the... You need to put on that weird house shirt. Thanks for watching Selling Out. I want to thank our, our producer, uh, Rob Schultz and Russell Anderson. I want to thank my guest, Ron Babcock. Thank I'm you. Jason Van Glass. Uh, Venmo is $25. That's the main takeaway. That's like, yeah, that should like be the you've been, catchphrase. You've been that part of it really need, hard. Yeah. CISO never gave me 50 bucks. I need at least two people to send me $25. Okay. But the good right. news is you'll get a Bob Ross Chia Pet or whatever item you pick. Yeah, I like this. That's the show. Also, hey, big shout out to the U.S. Post Office for making all this happen. I salute their service. Hell yeah. Uh, that's the show. Good night. Good night.